Hello class, welcome to the next lesson of eighth grade Eureka Math. We are in module seven and this is lesson five called Solving Equations with Radicals. So we've been practicing solving equations throughout the year using our different properties and now we're going to practice solving equations with all those properties plus these equations what we will need to use radicals to solve. So we will have to use radicals to solve equations. So it's just like what we've done before with all the properties of equality, with the distributive property, with the commutative property, with the associative property. We're going to use all of our properties plus radicals to solve equations, finding what a variable equals. So you'll need pages 45 through 56 of your module four, seven workbook. And let's begin with our vocabulary. Uh, we have three vocabulary terms today, uh, and we've seen them all before this year. Radical is what we've seen in this module. It's the symbol for taking the root of a number. Now, this is the symbol for square root. The radical just looks like this. If it is a cube root, there's a little three right there. There actually could be a two right there, but mathematicians have agreed that if you're just doing square roots, you don't need the two. But the radical itself is this thing, looks kind of like a check mark, looks kind of like a division, symbol for long division, but that is the radical. We also have the properties of equality. And when I talk about the properties of equality, I'm talking about all of them the addition property of equality, the subtraction property of equality, the multiplication property of equality, and the division property of equality. Those are the four basic operations, and they are how we make an equation stay equal. It, that we use the properties of equality to keep an equation equal, and we do that by changing both sides in the exact same way. Both sides of an equation change in the exact same way. So if I subtract on one side, I have to subtract on the other because it has to be equal. If I multiply one side, I have to multiply the other side to stay equal. And so we use the properties of equality. We've been using them since early in the year. We're going to use them again today. Another property I want to remind you about is the distributive property. The distributive property means multiplying a sum is the same as multiplying by the add-ins or the pieces of the addition sentence. So let me, I wrote an example right here using variables. I can add B and C first and then multiply by A. That is one option. I could do B plus C and multiply by a. Or I can do a times b and a times c and then add them. I get the same answer. That's a distributive property. Distributive property means if you want, you can just pass the a to the b, pass the a to the c, and add after multiplying. The distributive property tells us that in an equation like this, you can add the pieces first, or you can multiply first and then add. So uh, this shows you the distributive property, just shows you that this and this are equal. Really helps us when we're trying to solve for variables and when we're trying to solve equations. So what are we doing today? Today, we will use our knowledge of square and cube roots. In lessons two, three, and four, we talked about square and cube roots. We're going to use what you learned in those lessons to solve nonlinear equations. And remember, nonlinear equations are when exponent variables will be two or three. Uh, really, the exponent variable is anything except zero or one. Remember, linear equations have a zero or one exponent. Nonlinear have other things. So throughout this year, at least for a while, we have been solving linear equations, finding what x equals. 
or finding what y equals. Today, we're going to start with nonlinear equations, where the exponents have diff, where the variables have different exponents. So let me show you how we're going to do this. Our examples will start on page 45. So make sure you have all your notes. If you do not have these notes written down, go back, pause the video, and copy them down. But I'm going to move on to page 45 so we can show you what we're going to be doing here. On page 45, you'll see two examples. Let's look at the first one. What we want to do here is we want to find x. We want to solve for x. So let's do this. We're going to do our work. I'm going to do my work in red, and I'm going to write down the properties I use in blue. And I would like you to write down your properties also to make sure that you are thinking about how to solve this. Instead of just solving it, I want you thinking about how it is solved. That's why we write our properties. So I look at this equation and I see a number and a parentheses. So I'm actually going to use the distributive property to simplify this a little bit. So I'm going to use the distributive property and I'm just going to write dist prop because I know what that means. And I'm going to multiply one half times everything inside the parentheses. So right now, the left side of the equation stays the same. And I do one half times 18x, which is 9x, plus one half times 54, which is 27. So that's my first step. Now, remember your goal when you're solving equations, your goal for this kind of algebra is isolating x, getting x all by itself. So I want all the x's on one side and the numbers on the other. So I see right now that I'm going to do minus 9x on that side. But if I do minus 9x on this side, I have to do it on that side also. Now this helps me because it makes it simpler. Taking away 9x using the subtraction property of equality, because I subtract on both sides, makes that a zero. 9x minus 9x is zero. 9x minus 9x is zero. So what I'm left with, I have zeros, but I keep x to the third, x cubed, equals 27. Now, I just want x. I don't want x cubed. I want to know what x is. So to know what x is, I have to take the cube root of x to the third because the cube root of x to the third is x because cubing and cube root are inverses. They cancel each other. So the cube root and the third and the exponent three cancel to make x. But remember, we have to stay equal. So when I do the cube root on this side, I have to do the cube root on that side also. So I need the cube root of 27, which you can use the chart I gave you, I believe, in lesson three to help you. But the cube root, oh, that's square root. I need to put a little three to make sure I do cube root. The cube root of 27 is actually three. So after I use my properties, I find out in this equation that x equals 3. Using the distributive property, using the subtraction property of equality, and using the cube root, I found x. That's what we're doing. Let me show you one more time with example 2. Well, probably more than one more time because I think we have some exercises. These are the examples. But I think I'm going to ask you to do some of the examples on your own. So make sure you're paying attention and taking good notes and copying my work for our examples. Example two, we have this equation. X times the quantity X minus 3 subtract 51 equals negative 3X plus 13. Okay, so what I want to do for this one I want to 
for, again, I see a number on the outside of parentheses. So I'm going to use the distributive property again to pass the x on the outside inside to simplify. So distributive property, x times x is x squared. Minus 3 times x is negative 3x. Nothing happens to the minus 51, and the right side of the equation stays the same. But I also see something great I can do to make some zeros. I can add 3x to that side because negative 3x plus 3x makes 0. But remember the addition property of equality. When I add 3x on this side, I have to add 3x on that side, which really helps me out again because I have minus 3x plus 3x. That's another 0. So I have zeros. What do I keep? I get rid of the zeros, and I keep x squared minus 51 equals 13. Now, remember what I said. I only want the x's, so this 51 is in the way. So I'm going to add 51 to do minus 51 plus 51 is a 0. But again, I need to use the addition property of equality and add 51 on the right side also. So this x squared and 0 is just x squared. And 13 plus 51 is 64. Now I have x squared equals 64, but I just want x. So to change x squared and x, I do the inverse of squaring, the opposite. So I need to do the square root. This is the square root of x squared. The square root and the squared cancel out, so I just get x. But when I change one side, I have to change the other. So if I do square root over here on the left, I have to do square root on the right. And I find out that the square root of 64 is 8. And that's x equals 8, and that's the answer. So you can see that solving these equations is just like we've been doing stuff we've been doing earlier this year. We are using the distributive property again the properties of equality again. The only new thing is we're using square roots or cube roots to simplify the x. So that's the, really the new thing that we're doing today. We're just adding a new tool to our equation solving toolkit. So let's uh, check out what the exercises look like. Exercises are on page 46. 47 and 48. So we got three pages of exercises. Let's see how we do this. So find the positive value of x that makes each equation true, and then verify that your solution is correct. So it wants us to solve these equations. Now, if you'll notice something I want to point out, Part A is solving it, and Part B is explaining how you solve it. We are already doing the explaining when we solve it. So the way you explain is showing, writing down the properties you use. So if you are confused where it says explain, I just want you to state the properties you use. And you should be doing that for every question, even when it does not ask you to, ex you to explain. I want you to tell me what properties you used. I really want you to tell me what properties you used. Okay, so let's go to A and let's solve this. I'm going to write it again over here to give myself a little bit more room. Now, what I see right here, first thing that I want to do, I see a 5x and a minus 5x. I actually want to move this over here. And I can do that with the commutative property. What happens is the left side stays the same, because I'm okay with that right now. But I'm going to get 5x minus 5x together. 
And the reason I did that is because subtracting 5x minus 5x makes 0. And that already makes my equation simpler. So I make a 0, and it looks simpler now. I get x squared minus 14 equals 67. It's already simpler. And again, the goal is to get the x by itself. So I'm going to add 14 to make another 0. But the addition property of equality tells me for add 14 here. I have to add 14 on the other side. After I do that, I get x squared equals 81. Well, remember, I don't want x squared. I just want x. So I'm just going to take the square root of x squared because square root and squared cancel to make x. But if I do the square root on the left, I have to do it on the right. The square root of 81 is 9. And that is the answer. Now, it does want me to verify the answer, which means put the x back into the equation I started with. So to verify, I'm going to take x equals 9 and put it back in here. So I get 9 squared minus 14 equals 5 times 9 plus 67 minus 5 times 9. So I'm going to solve this. 9 squared is 81 minus 14 equals 45 plus 67 minus 45. 81 minus 14 is 67. 45 minus 45 is the 0. And so I just get 67 equals 67. That means my solution is verified. I proved it. So verify the solution just means really check your work, check your answer. That's how we do it. Uh, that's how we did this one. Using these properties, finances, part B where it says explain, this is my explanation right here. I already explained by writing my properties. So if anybody looks at this, they know they can see what you did and they can see why right here. What I'd like you to try right now is I would like you to try number two yourself right here. Solve and simplify that equation. Hint, first step, use the distributive property first. So take a minute, solve and simplify that. And by, po well, pause the video, solve and simplify. Unpause the video when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so hopefully you pause and you're ready and you did this. Let me show you how I would do this. And we'll see if you got it. So here we go. First thing I'm going to use is I'm going to use the distributive property. Because I want to pass the x inside both of those, inside the parentheses to simplify. x times x is x squared. Minus 1 times x is minus 1x. Now I see something on both sides. If I add x there, that turns into a 0. And the addition property of equality tells me I have to add x here, and I get another 0. So first, you should have done the distributive property. Then you should have made some zeros so that you keep x squared equals 121. But remember, we want simplified, solved, so we just want x. To find x, remember, we take the square root of x squared because square root and squared cancel. But if I do square root on that side, I have to do it on the right side also. The square root of 121 is 11 exactly, so x equals 11. And that's how we did number two. You can see all we're doing is using properties plus square and cube roots to solve equations. Number three is a little bit different because it's kind of a geometry problem. It says a square has a side length of 3x inches and an area of 324 inches squared. What is the value of x? So talking about a square, so let's help ourselves out and draw a square. Now it says the side lengths are 3x. 
That means every side is 3x. And it says the area is 324. Well, in the square, what is the formula for area? Hopefully you remember that in a square's area is length times width. Well, the length of the square and the width of the square, square's length and width is the same, they're both 3x. So to find the area of a square, I do length times width. So let's put this together. I have area is 3, 2, 4. I have the length, I have the width. So let's make our equation. Our equation is gonna be area equals length times width. So three, two, four is A. Length is three X, width is three X. That's my equation that I'm going to use to find X. Let's solve this. The first thing I'm gonna do is multiply. Well, actually the first thing I did is I substituted to get my equation. Now I'm gonna multiply 3x times 3x. So I get 324, and I do the part separately. So three times three is nine, and x times x is x squared. So that's the first step. Now I have, 9x squared. I really just want 1x squared. So how do I turn the 9 into a 1? Well, I divide by 9. But the division property of equality tells me if I divide by 9 over here, I have to divide by 9 there also. So I have to do 324 divided by 9, which I believe if I'm correct, is 56. But let me get out my calculator just to double check and make sure I'm not lying to you. 324 divided by 9, oh, is 36. Oh, I misspoke. So I get 36 equals x squared. But remember, I don't want just x squared, I want x. So I need to take the square root to cancel the square. The square root cancels the square. And if I do square root here, I have to do square root there. And the square root of 36 is 6. We learned that in lesson 2. So x equals 6 is the final answer to that one. So not only can we solve equations like exercise 1 and 2, we can also figure out things, facts about squares like in exercise 3. So, we're, so in exercise 3, we actually wrote an equation and solve it. Something else you can do. Let's look at page 47. Ooh, more equations. So what I'd like you to do right now, we have three equations to solve on page 47. I would like you to solve them. Pause the video, solve all three, and then come back and check your work to see how you did. So pause the video now, and then when you come back, I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so you're back because you tried exercises four, five, and six. Let's see how you do. I'm going to do them myself right here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do on this equation, I'm going to do minus 14 on both sides to make just to keep the x term by itself. That's great because I also make a zero there, and I get the x term by itself. But the subtraction property of equality tells me I need to do minus 14 over there also. So on the left, you should have kept negative 3x to the third. And negative 67 minus negative 14 is negative 81. Now, I just want the x to the third for my next step. This negative 3 is in the way. So I'm going to divide by negative 3 because negative three divided by negative three is one. So that turns a complicated x cubed to one x cubed. But the division property of equality tells me I need to divide by negative three on that side also. 
Well, negative 81 divided by negative 3 is going to be a positive because a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and it's actually going to be positive 27. So I have x cubed equals 27, but I don't want x cubed, I just want x. So I have to take the cubed root. I take the cube root because cube root cancels the cubed to give me x. But I have to do the cube root on both sides. Now you can use the chart I gave you for lesson three and you know the cube root of 27 is three because three threes multiplied make 27. Three times three times three is 27. So x equals three is the answer you should have gotten. I hope you got it. Maybe you got it, give yourself a pat on the back. If you did not get it, go back and see where you might be able to fix your work. Next, let's see how you did on exercise five. Exercise five, oh, it looks like this. I want to use the distributive property. I want to use the distributive property, and I'm actually going to use it on both sides of the equation because they both have parentheses multiplied by a number. So after, let's do the distributive property on the left first. x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x, and I keep minus 3. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 19.5, uh, ooh, 19.5 times 4. This is where you can get a calculator you want. I'll try to do it in my head. Let's see. 4 times 20 is 80. 4 times a half is 2. So 80 minus 2 I it is 78. Now I did the distributed, distributed property. I need to start simplifying. Uh, let's make the 4x's go away, shall we? I'm just going to do minus 4x on both sides. And I do it on both sides because that's the subtraction property of equality. But doing minus 4x here makes a 0, and minus 4x here makes a 0. That simplifies it a lot. I get x squared minus 3 equals 78. Still not simplified enough, you said, hopefully. You probably should have said, OK, I want to make that negative th minus 3 go away. So I'm going to add 3 to make a 0. But the addition property of equality told you that you have to add 3 to both sides. So you should, your next step should be x squared equals 81. And then when you were working on this, you said, I don't want, you don't want x squared, you want x. So to cancel the squared, you need to do the square root. Put a radical there. And you need to do it to both sides because this is an equal equation. Then you have the square root of 81. So, well, the square root of x squared is x. And the square root of 81 is 9. So you should have got x equals 9. That is your answer. I hope you got it. If you did not get it, go back and check what you did. If you did get it, excellent work. Give yourself a high five. Then you, after you tried exercise 5, you tried exercise 6. Let's see how I would solve this. Well, the first thing I'm going to do, I see parentheses, so I'm going to use the distributive property. That should have been the first thing you did. So the left side of the equation stays the same. Then we distribute on the right. x times x squared is x cubed. Minus 5 times x is minus 5x. Then we get plus 6x. Well, what am I going to do now? Well, I'm looking at this and I see, well, I have a 5x and a, a minus 5x and a 6x. Let's put those together. Let's just add. Let's add those like terms next to each other together. So the left side stays the same. The x cubed stays the same. And negative 5x plus 6x just gives me 1x. Gives me 1x. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1. Then I can find some zeros. I actually see that I have a positive x on both sides. So if I do minus x on both sides, which is the subtraction property of equality, turns that into a zero, turns that into a zero. So it's getting simpler and simpler. So I get 216 
equals x cubed. 216 equals x cubed. So uh, then what I do to find, I remember you, you should have said you don't want x cubed, you just want x. So to simplify x cubed into x, you need to take the cube root because cube root and the three exponent cancel to give you just x. But you need to do it to both sides because this is an equation. So now you need the cube root of 216, which I do not have memorized off the top of my head. So I'm going to have to uh, try to figure it out. Let's say, yep, I think it's 6. It's 6. Let me, let me double check right here. I do cube root means I need to multiply it by 3 times, so I need to do 6 times 6 times 6, and that makes 216. So x equals 6. Hopefully you have the chart you made in your notes for lesson 3. So you can just look up the cube roots on your reference chart. So you should have got, when you did these yourself, you should have got 3 for number 4, 9 for number 5, and 6 for number 6. Hopefully you got all those. And if you got all those, then you know exactly what you're doing, and you're doing well. If you did not, maybe go back, get some, look at them again, try them again. Maybe ask me for help, and you can get some more practice. We have one more exercise to do. Exercise 7 it says, what are we trying to determine in the diagram below? It seems like what we're trying to do is we're trying to find what this x is right here. We're trying to find the length of a leg, the missing value inside the length of a leg. So uh, this one we might need to do a little bit of work on. But you see it's a triangle. And you should think, wait, in Module 7, Lesson 1, we talk about the Pythagorean Theorem. So the Pythagorean Theorem should be able to help us with this. And you're right. We're trying to find x. So let's use the Pythagorean Theorem to find x. Let's first label our sides. So you should know that this, the legs are A and B, and the hypotenuse is always, always, always C. And the Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then we substitute. So first thing I'm going to do is substitute my values. So I said A was 5. B was 4 times the square root of x, so that takes the place of B, and C is 11. Well, let's uh, multiply using our exponents. 5 squared means 5 times 5, so we get 25. Now, to do this one right here, we separate it. We do 4 squared times the square root of x squared. That's how you can separate the, ex the exponent with the pieces right there. 11 squared is 11 times 11, which is 121. I'm going to multiply again because I split my parentheses. Four, I split the 4 and the square root of x. So let me do that right now. 25 stays 25 plus 4 squared. 4 times 4 is 16. Square root of x squared, that's a square root and a square. So they cancel. So I just get x equals 121. So I get 25 plus 16x equals 121. So now I'm going to use the subtraction property of equality to do minus 25 on both sides. And I do minus 25 on both sides because I want just the 16x by itself. So that turns into a 0. So I get 16x all by itself. And I do minus 25 on that side, which gives me uh, 96. Now you should say right here, we don't want 16x. We just want x. Well, how do we turn 16x into 1x? We divide by 16. But the division property of equality tells me I have to divide by 16 on both sides. Now, I believe the answer, 
Now, 16x divided by 16 is 1x. I believe 96 divided by 16 is 6, but let me check. It is. 96 divided by 16 is 6. So x equals 6. And that is how we, you, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and what we learned about radicals and square roots to, sol to solve the Pythagorean theorem. So you can solve the Pythagorean theorem even if they're not whole numbers, even if one x is missing in a square root like that. So you, you can solve all kinds of equations once you, you can solve all kinds of equations, even nonlinear equations, when you understand square and cube roots. Great skill to have when you want to solve a variety of equations. Let's see what your independent work is going to be like. Page 49 has the lesson summary, giving you a couple of examples right here, how to solve with square and cube roots. Exit tickets, page 51. Let's talk about that last. Shuffle it to the back. If you want some more examples to help you understand this, look at the homework helper on pages 53 and 54. And then your practice is the problem set on page 55 and 56. There are some questions for you to answer about solving some equations. You might need to put, might need your work on a separate piece of paper, but you can do that. Seven questions on page 55, looks like three more on page 56. Do your best to solve all these situations using square and cube roots. Remember, my answers to these questions are online, so you can check my answers on the Google Classroom to see how well you did. After you check your work, after you ask me any questions you have, and you're confident you know how to solve these nonlinear equations, go to the exit ticket, which was back on page 51, and then there's two more equations for you to solve, two more nonlinear equations that you need to use square and cube roots. You'll use a square root to solve number one. You'll use a cube root to solve number two. And then remember to take a picture of your exit ticket and turn it in so that I can see you master these skills. You might have a little bit of trouble. Make sure you list your properties that you're using to solve the equations. If you have any trouble, ask me for help. But remember, don't just give up. Keep trying. Persevere. Good luck. And I'll see you for the next lesson.